This Thrive Loud episode is brought to you by Allscope, a holistic media communications company with a long history of delivering great work and driving exceptional results. From concept and idea to time and place, Allscope's thinking has no limits and no boundaries. Their experienced team builds fully integrated solutions that perform. Go to allscope.com to connect with them so they can listen and best inform and advise you on how to build your business and your brand. Allscope. Listen. Think. Create. Do. Now I'm getting really excited. Okay, this is the part where we're going to get loud. Holy crap, here we go. I like telling stories. I learn best through experiences. Everything I do is because of everything I did. Talk about having maximum impact while having a ton of fun. When you can net through that, what you do leave behind for your listener will have more impact. Wow, bring it on. It's time to take an inside look at those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond, and today on Thrive Loud, I bring you one of the most talked about teams in business and in podcasting. They hail from Canada, but now live in Brooklyn and Los Angeles. They're known for bringing you their straight talk and at times humorous perspective on making, managing, and protecting your money, where each week they educate, entertain, and inspire you to achieve your financial goals. Thrive Loud listeners, I bring you the crew, the hosts, the entire entertainment team of two black guys with good credit, Sean Linda, Arlington Forbes, and Dion Nichols. Two guys, two black guys with good credit and one lady. How are we doing today? <laughs> what an intro. Thank you, Lou. We're doing good. <laughs> so first of all, Sean Linda, Arlington Forbes, Dion Nichols, welcome to Thrive Loud. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we're going to start this off. Let's let's understand that their podcasters connect in all different types of ways. They meet at conferences. They meet in business. And in some cases, they meet from retired NBA All-Stars, which is actually how this all came to, came about with uh, Jamal Mashburn, a former guest on Thrive Loud, and a featured guest on Two Black Guys with Good Credit. And we just connected across this and recognized what a great opportunity because I was fascinated by this story. This is not only one of the best named shows ever, uh, but it's also a really great idea for, for a program. So what I wanted the Thrive Loud community to get an understanding of, and we'll, we'll pass the baton accordingly amongst the three of them, to get an understanding of how this all came together, the idea, a little background, because it's a smart idea and probably a great story, even how you guys all pieced it together. So uh, Sean, I'm going to start with you, if that's okay. No and you problem. can educate our listeners on how this all happens. No problem. Well, you know, Arlington and I, and even Dion, we've all known each other for 20 plus years. And um, I had a wholesaling business, which was, which allowed me to go to L.A. Uh, at least once a month. So when I would go to L.A., Arlington and I would always have these long, long, long conversations with <laughs> finance. We were, you know, in our 20s or 30s, just trying to position ourselves and, you know, how much we want to go in real estate, investments and all those kind of things. And then it would just... And then when we'd meet again, there'd be different, he'd come with different perspectives of different people he's spoken to. And we'd always have these great conversations. So fast forward, um, 2016, I was invited to an open mic podcast and I thought it was great. And I just rushed when after the, after the podcast open mic, I rushed to call Dion. I was like, man, we have to do this. We need to do a podcast. And then we tried to think of a concept and I called Arlington and I said, you know, Let's do a podcast about finance and let's just do it the way we had all of our conversations over the years. And it just kind of went from there. And the name just came organically of one of my friends. I told her what I was doing and she was just like, two black guys with good credit. And I'm like, <laughs> now, now, I guess this will be before I go to Arlington here, I guess you guys must have good credit, which is a good <laughs> thing to start off right away. <laughs> <laughs> So Arlington, when, when Sean came and approached this idea to you about putting a podcast together, give me your two cents on what you thought about this concept. Um, 
when he when he approached me with the idea, I was like, oh god, um, a podcast? Really? You want to do a podcast? Because at that time, he was doing he was still he was doing his financial charity called Financially Clean, right. and he was like, look, Ben, we want a way to reach the adults. We're in the classrooms, we're working with the youth, and they love it. But adults are coming to us and they're saying, hey, we want some of that knowledge too. So I'm thinking we should do this podcast. And Sean and I, we are opposite ends of the same spectrum. We both are seeking success and knowledge and information and we're entrepreneurial, but we just have completely different approaches to resolving the same concerns. And over the years, we've we've talked about doing many things together. And my answer or his answer is usually been like, nah, nah, I'm not going to do that because you're going to drive me crazy. Or, you know, your opinion, I can't, I just can't take it. Or you're too picky. Or, or I'm like, uh, you're just, you know. So this time I said, you know what? I always say no. So that this time I'm going to say yes. And, um, you know, I decided to jump in. And give it a shot. And I mean, I'd been an avid podcast listener. So I was like, okay, I can do this. And uh, yeah, decided to jump in and, and, and say yes instead of saying no. Let's bridge the gap here across the board here. And I want to bring Dion into this conversation because yeah. for, for those, so Dion, give your involvement into this mix because as we'll talk about the format of the show, it's actually one of the more unique pieces of what you guys do. But how did this, they came up with the idea and how did you get involved? Well, then they came to me, and I'm still trying to figure out, I don't really remember how the name, The Lady with the Facts, came to fruition. <laughs> but if you listen to the show, these two took their you know long conversations that they've had over the years and brought it to the podcast. This casual format, this kind of barbershop banter, but they felt they needed something to bring the balance, you know, to kind of buffer it. So I bring the, the structure, if you will, to the show. I kind of lay down the law, if you will. And it just seemed to work. And we ran with it. So it's really great for the Thrive Lab listeners, which there will be plenty of links for you to check out many of the episodes on the show. Uh, they do a great job, whatever the topic might be for that particular episode, um, and what Dion will do is literally provide the facts, interesting information, trivial information, or very detailed uh, components about how stuff goes on. I'll just use the example of the Jamal Mashburn episode where Dion actually goes in and talks about that franchising started way, way back, like in what was it, like the 1600s or something like that. Yes. And who knew about any of this stuff? So, so this is interesting. I want to, as you guys have now been doing this show for a while, and obviously you get better and better. I know this from doing an inter each interview that you do, or you guys actually will just not even always do interviews. You'll do lots of topics. Talk about how you guys determine the content that you're going to communicate each week. And anyone could take this. This is a, the jump ball question for the three of you. <laughs> the, well, I want to say to, to one thing before I answer that quick question. The lady with the facts came about because Sean and I knew through our conversations we were stating facts, fallacies, myths, conceptions, <laughs> ideologies, opinions, um, you know, historical facts and historical inaccuracies. <laughs> so we realized we needed someone to keep us on the straight and narrow. So if he was to say the average interest rate is 8%. And I said, no, the interest rate's more like five. We needed someone to say what the actual interest rate was right. in the conversation. So Dion's role came about because not only did we need the balance between our yin and our yang, but we needed someone to make sure we were actually, we were factually accurate. And that's how we thought of the lady with the facts. And that's why her name came about the lady with the facts, because that was her role. If he said something and I said something, she'd be like, no, this is the actual truth about this is the actual fact in relating to that statement. She would like keep it. us on the, the straight and narrow. But she then it evolved to the history portion. I, I don't even remember how the history came about. I think it was through conversations, but that evolved. And then that became an amazing component, because like you said, she's giving you history on things you think you know, but you don't really know. Like some of these things go back so far 
And we think maybe it just came a generation, two generations, the 50s, the 30s. And some of these things are biblical ideologies. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of how do we come up with the um, concepts for the show, that is a knockdown, drag out. Um, Because <laughs> <laughs> we truly care, care about our content. <laughs> creative. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a knockdown, drag out creative meeting where, you know, we just come to the table and say, hey, what do you want to do a show on? And we look at, you know, things that we may have experienced, things we may have read, something that may have happened that week, an interaction we may have had with a person. And then we kind of qualify it against the the foundation of what the show is about. Right. You know, our yeah, so our goal, Sean's goal was always he wanted to he wants to leave you with a great takeaway and he also we want to lay a financial foundation for the average person who may or may not have financial knowledge but they're financially curious and then we want to make something that's also entertaining and engaging for someone who has financial knowledge but is not a financial expert. Sean, I want to jump in on this, and this is an interesting piece because while the name of the show is actually very eye-catching, very ear-catching, and a really interesting almost component because there are many communities, not just not just black guys who didn't have good credit, but there are many communities that are always struggling and trying to figure out the best way to, to do better financially, to have better management of their finances, their planning, the, their money. And what's really unique about this idea of this program is that there's almost a socially conscious responsibility that you guys are taking on on this show. Sean, can you talk a little bit about that or any of the the, the buzz that you've gotten from of the content and the episodes that you've released and how that has affected maybe even in these brainstorm conversations, how you guys address um, each of these financial topics that you talk about? Well, it's been an amazing ride to see the response that we've gotten. You know, we've gotten... You know, we didn't really have a, a market or a segment. We didn't build this show and say, oh, we're just building two black guys. Good credit is only going to be for African-Americans. We just wanted to make finance explain, simplify it, dumb it down so everybody can get and understand it in the way that we've talked over the years. And, you know, we've been now the show is just we get fan mail from people of all different walk sizes, yeah. backgrounds and just thanking us for simplifying, for simplifying things and for making things easy to understand. You know, I don't know if I'm, I say this name, they always cringe when I say it, but I, I, I'm I'm saying Cleef Huxtable from the Cosby Show. <laughs> We've kind of made it like the, our show to be somewhat of a show in that similar in the sense that, you know, it's, for, it's a family show that everybody liked. And we're a finance show that everybody likes and can relate to. I mean, I've spoken to, you know, I remember one of the first person people I spoke to about our show, her husband was an inventor and she was... Um, she was a philanthropist and they lived on Park Avenue. And I told her about her show and she was just complaining to me about her brother, like messing up their family estate and how his credit is horrible and how he needs to listen to our show, you know, and then we've taught in inner city school and the kids are just like amazed about what you can do with credit and how you can leverage credit. And then their parents listen to our show and love it just as well. So, I mean, it's really, no matter where you come from, there's always somebody that needs some financial um, advice. I'll say this. You guys have found a very unique sweet spot. And and I've been joking about this with lots of other people in, in, in the podcast world. When you're able to marry education, entertainment and inspiration into one show, you've, you've got your formula. And, and this is really interesting because a lot of people will listen to if it's a famous person, you're very interested in their story. And we're kind of a, there's that starstruck component to it. And I've had many guests on my show who have been, you know, they're unknown to the masses, but their story or their, their entrepreneurial journey has been unbelievably incredible. And people walk away from this stuff with great, with great, almost like, wow, not only did I learn something, I like got a whole bunch of stuff out of this. And I think, I think that's what podcasting enables us to do. What I, what I want to drill down to, and let's, let's let uh, the lady with the facts provide this. The show's had pretty great growth from the beginning till now. Dion, share us a little bit, I guess, from when the show started. So our listeners have a, a spectrum to go with and what we're up to now, because it's becoming a lot larger than even what you guys have probably ever imagined. 
it's you're absolutely right. Um, when we began, um, as we all talked about, this came from a personal personal mission um, to get beyond the classroom and, and get this information out to the people. Um, our focus from the very beginning was about putting out strong content. You know, no one was looking at the numbers. It wasn't about the likes and the shares, right? Um, but it's amazing when you're not paying attention how others are. And uh, last year, uh, Black Enterprise named us as one of the top podcasts uh, of the year. Um, then there were accolades from, from, from iTunes. That blew us away, you know, with all the thousands, if not, you know, of, of podcasts out there. You know, we had, we had no you know, idea that would, that, that would happen. Um, so it really helped, you know, give us a little more traction and exposure um, to the point where, you know, we have a, a worldwide audience, which is pretty cool. Um, and as of today, we're launching on, on TuneIn Premium that has millions of listeners all over the world. And if you had asked us, it's only been two years that this is where we'd be today, and then here sitting talking to you, um, I don't think any of us could have could have predicted it. Um, so we're we're very proud of, of how this has just organically um, grown, and is actually you know really resonating with people. That that's probably the best part. Yeah, it's good. I'll, I'll also I want to go specific here. The three of you, and while there are some Canadian roots here, and every now and then we'll hear and again and all these different accent <laughs> pieces, you guys have great sounding podcast radio voices all of you as do you as do you i'm trying to take tips from your voice your voice well there <laughs> well but it's, it's true because, you know we, we have the deep the deep baritone that comes in every now and then but it is true because i say this that it's not only important to get the great content but you have to listen to it you know knowing that you're listening to it and it's, it's appeasing to you and uh, the combination across, you know, Arlington a little bit deeper, Sean a little in the mid range, and obviously Dion with with very nice sounding female voice, it all just kind of blends together really well. So just from a, a listening perspective, now I'm going to ask some, some Thrive Loud stuff that we do here, and we'll go around the table. Um, I love to ask the guests on the show when you guys have trouble thriving, who or what practice do you turn to to get yourself back on the thriving track. Now, I give this with an asterisk because the show has been thriving for the last two years. So we can dive into this personally. I'm sure there's been behind the scenes headaches or issues or problems. <laughs> what you guys, as Arlington is laughing, is that song, um, <laughs> wants to know what are the things that you guys turn to? Arlington, I'll start with you because the giggle just kicked off the, uh, the first piece. What do you turn to when you want to get back to your thriving track? Is this personally or in the context of making the show? <laughs> Whichever one. But, but you, it could be both, right? Because it takes up a lot of our time. So either way, personal or for the show. Okay. I think in the context of making the show, because the show is you see Sean, Dion, and I on the forefront and we're the voices you hear. But then there's also Matt Smith, who edits our show, and my wife, Jacqueline Forbes. She's the producer of the show. So it's actually a team of five people. And what we've found out is when the knockdown drag out creative sessions get too hot, we just take a pause <laughs> and we say, OK, let's just everybody get off the phone and we will reconvene. And what happens in the re in the in the time in which we in we reconvene, we have little parlance so that I'll call Sean and work through what what his issues or concerns are. And then I'll call Dion and see what her issues or concerns are. And we kind of have these little sidebars and in the sidebars, we're able to kind of calm down and flush things out. And then we get back on the phone, like maybe a day later and everybody kind of has a better understanding of what everybody was trying to say because of all the little sidebars that have taken place. And then it allows us to kind of, get to the crunch. And if that doesn't work, I just go for a run and I don't answer anybody's phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll bounce it around. Sean, I'll go to you. Well, you know, like I we say all the time, I tell my staff all the time, you know, it, it can be crazy in the background, but as long as the output is excellent, that's all that matters. So it, it can get a little chaotic and it's just strong personalities. You know, it's really strong personalities and trying to, and try to be creative at the same time. So like Arlington says, like we've had some really contentious, strong, you know, um, meetings and, you know, it always starts with, you know, either Arlington or myself taking the initiative to call each other and then try to work through it, what the issues are, and then kind of relaying. And I think sometimes we start off with just texting messages to soften the blow 
and then hopefully, like Arlen just says, within a few days, we all get back on the phone and we regroup and try to knock this thing out. Because at the end of the day, it's like the cause is bigger than all of us. Like I tell everybody, that we're we're saving, changing lives right now. We really are, and we feel the impact. The fan mail that we get and the people that respond to us, you know, from all different walks of life, you can tell like we're really impacting their life, and that's the important thing. So we all have to put our pride aside. And, you know, continue the mission and get the job done. Because it's only just begun. That's great. Dion. Well, I think Sean nailed it. As long as you remember that this is bigger than us, you know, you, you it brings you back, you know. But I will say, if I'm going to take it from a personal level, um, I find that when I feel things get are getting the, probably the most heated, that's when I get still and quiet. So Arlington may go for a run. Sean may go do yoga. Um, I get still, and that's where I take time to, whether it's um, go through my um, affirmations, uh, whether it's going into, it's journaling, it's, um, but that's when I take a moment to really kind of get still, reflect, um, rejuvenate before I, so I can come back, you yeah. know, uh, refueled and ready to go. I like it. So do you guys have, uh, with the episodes that you guys have done, was there one particular episode Maybe I'll just go around that, that you guys were more proud of or something that you did it was almost like a light bulb went off in your head or it was such a great topic or you got such great feedback. Anything particular. Um, we'll go around. Sean, I'll start with uh, you. We on did this a one. show for Black History Month and it was uh, Black Power, Money Power. And, you know, we wanted to be straight and frank. We didn't want to glorify things that didn't need to be glorified. We wanted to give it to people real. And. I was really proud of it when we got it done and, and the angle that we took and people loved it. I mean, we got so many new fans just by off that show. So I would say impact wise and, you know, and delivering a show in which, you know, was us in a way that we can tell the story, I think was our, our best work to date. Awesome. Anyone else want to jump in? Um, I'll say the one I, black power, money power was a, was a it's really strong one, but I also liked, um, four, 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 four with Jay by uh, the four, four, four show. When we, uh, decoded the Jay-Z album, <laughs> um, I like that show a lot because one of the things we try to do is, is remain in a unique space. You know, we give you straight talk as we say, but we also want to do things that other financial shows would never do. And often in our meetings, we say, we know we have a good idea when we're like, CNBC would never do that. And <laughs> decoding the Jay-Z album was that. Like when that idea came up, it was like, CNBC would never do that. But it's such a, a great thing to do because it's, it's, it's timely, it's youth-focused, it's pop-cultural, it's fun, and it's extremely informative because Jay-Z is now a multi- what, the guy's almost worth a billion dollars, right. him and Beyonce, and he's involved in every facet of business, and he's an entertainer. So to debunk his album when he's talking about real estate and buying art and, and you know, not spending too much money and how good credit's better than throwing money in a strip club, like, that is a great conversation that we knew our audience would enjoy. We enjoyed it. The album was great. And it, it's basically, it's, it's the two black guys magic. Like they say, black girls magic. Well, that show to me was two black guys magic. I like it. And any for favorite of yours, Dion, just make rounding the horn here. Well, I'll say this. I think what blows me away the most is when we can take a really, I, w I will say dry, <laughs> you know, financial topic um, or um, the show that it stands out for me. Um, it's called Burying the Dead. Mm -hmm. And we actually dealt with um, how to you know, manage funeral costs and estate planning. Like, who wants to talk about that? But somehow, we two black guys it and make it entertaining. Like, who would have thought? But believe it or not, people have commented and said, you know, I needed to hear that. But I actually had fun listening to it. Um, so I think when we do that, that's probably what makes me the most proud. You know, that we can take some of the most basic kind of dry financial topic and actually make it entertaining. So that one sticks I, out. I love me. it. I think it's I think it's great stuff. And and I want to now ask the question where 
next? Where to next for for two black guys with good credit? Because this is more than just what you guys are at. And I know there's bigger and better things. So anyone want to give the the listeners a little bit of a preview of what's to come or where the big, hairy, audacious goal might be for the program in the future? Well, the big goal is we'd love to be on a, a major network. We'd love to even have like a live audience type thing, either in radio or, or TV. Um, we, we really want to make sure that America, if not the world, has an opportunity to listen to our show and we're able to really provide what we know now by, by doing this podcast, people want, you know. Um, and even not to give us a plug also, I'd like to say our next upcoming show is exactly what Dion just talked about. We brought something that probably not too many people talk about and made it and simplified it and actually made it entertaining, which I'm very excited to hear. And it should be out in about a week. It's called It's, called, it's Time to Bond. And we talk mm-hmm. about bonds, and about purchasing bonds in the market, and how dry can that be? But um, it, I think we, we, hit, we hit it. We did a home run with it. We made it enlightening, and what we call it, like to say, edutaining. You know, Sean, I'm laughing about it because I had a career in bonds, and trust me, it was as dry as possibly <laughs> can be. Yes, and I feel good that anyone that can make it sound sexy would be great. So. Oh, we had a blast! <laughs> Let me tell you, we bonded. Yeah, the bond so it's funny. <laughs> Oh, yeah. funny, But that's a great question. And I, I just want to add, like, wherever two black guys go, I think Sean is like, he, he is a, um, he look, he's a growth person. He's a growth individual. He stated this before. And I think that he has a lot of ideas of where he wants to take this show. And I think it'll be really interesting. And as the team, we kind of like, you know, he'll come in like, this is where we're taking that hill. And we kind of all go, that hill? And he's like, yes, that hill. And then we just kind of put our put our heads down and, you know, figure out a way to get up that hill. And um, I think he's done a great job. You know, the team has done a great job. He's done a great job with, like, looking at the different hills we need to take. Because we were like, oh, yeah, this will be fun. We'll do a podcast as a hobby. And Sean's like, hobby? No, we're going to conquer the world with this podcast. And we're like, the world? I thought this was just something we were doing, you know? So I think it'll be very interesting to see. Well, I'll say this to the Thrive Lab listeners who will get a chance to see some of the uh, the podcast art over here. These are some good looking people. So, yeah, you guys have a definite <laughs> chance to be on some kind of television or media or YouTube channel or something, because this is, mm-hmm. you know, we, we can't you only have good voices. You look good. So it, it's, it's all going <laughs> to all going to come together. Dude, I tell you, <laughs> yeah, we can hang out. We'll hang out in Brooklyn, all, all of us, in one time, and you know, maybe I'll just, I'll, I'll just, I just won't make you, you know, it'll make you guys look even that much better in the being near me. That's that's for sure. <laughs> all right, so let's do this for the Thrive Lab community. Let's give all the plugs. I'm, I'm going back to the lady with the fact because it just works so much better that way. Give us every place that we could find two black guys with good credit and uh, links, social media, places that they could look to, so they could listen, subscribe, and learn more about you guys. Okay, great. Well, you can definitely email us for one to tbgcwgc at gmail.com. We always love to hear from you. You can check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, CastBox FM, and tune in. Um, you can also find us on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, we love to hear from you all and you know, never hesitate to reach out. My handle on Instagram is Financially Clean Sean. Perfect. And Arlington, what are you? What are you? We'll put that out there as well. I am at two black guys at Instagram. Okay. Well, well. I'm really bad at that. <laughs> I guess you got it. You got it that part. Well, 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 I'm not the social media machine. Well, don't work <laughs> with them. So, so looking at this stuff, and by the way, this is great. I think our, our listeners are going to love this stuff. And obviously we love when we get great shows together. And one of the things that I've always found on Thrive Loud, because this, this is ideal, following your passion and putting out that great content, and getting that content out there is what's drawing the magic, the black guy's magic, the black girl's magic, whatever magic it is, it's magic and it's working. So uh, continued success to you guys. And I think uh, more and more we're going to hear about you guys uh, just continuing to thrive onward and upward. So kudos. This is my my podcasting clap to you across the uh, across the airwaves here. So now we're going to have fun because I've got two bonus questions for you. I, I realize we're going to have one more after this. Well, we're going to first of all. Your guys' all-time favorite movies, and uh, make uh, Sean. I'll start with you. You could come oh around. Your God, all-time man. favorite movie. Be on the spot. My all-time favorite movie. 
I have so many, and I'm, it's, I'm drawing a blank right now. Sean, I'll go, so I'll give you some time because I know my own time. <laughs> oh, you're just jumping this, at me. This is easy. I'm, my two. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Next. <laughs> ready? Yeah, Arlington, hit it. All right. My all-time favorite movie is The Godfather. All right. You're, you're, um, you're in good company. <laughs> it's The Godfather. Yeah. I quote it every time. I quote scenes from any one of them. Um, I'm a big mob movie fan because I think movies like The Godfather teach you certain things about life. Yeah. Mob movies teach you, to me, what I always take away from mob movies is the idea of talk less, listen more, mm -hmm. plan plan your strategies, execute. And, you know, you got to learn to keep certain things to yourself until you're ready to reveal. Don't reveal, don't play your, don't show your hand all the time. So keep it close to the, close to the breast, plan, keep your mouth shut, execute. I like it. I'm, uh, I'm ready. So Sean's ready. Hit it, Sean. I like, um, actually, one of my favorites is The Usual Suspects because you underestimate who the real villain is. The Usual Usually. Suspects? I didn't hear that. Yes. Oh, that's 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 a top. Kai, that's, Kaiser that's Sose. Top. Um, if I may, have, if, I may have, if I may have two, um, in terms of drama, mm -hmm. Shawshank Redemption. Wow. And in terms of comedy, uh, Bridesmaids. <laughs> I think I almost bust a lung. So, so that movie that was on movie. recently, Dion. And, and my favorite <laughs> clip was they went to the Mexican restaurant for the dinner beforehand, and they all got food poisoning. <laughs> One of the funniest scenes I think I've ever seen in any movie. Like disgusting, <laughs> gross humor. To have disgusting, gross humor with all those female <laughs> comics and actresses, even better. What? Oh my gosh! Well, I saw it on a plane. I said, I don't know if it's your your emotions are more heightened on a plane. I was on a six hour flight to Paris, and I saw that movie. And when I tell you, I was buckled over. I'm crying, and by the end. The gentleman next to me we arrived at our destination. He said, did you enjoy that? <laughs> That's, funny. That's great stuff. I, I, I guess I, I just wanted to go out there because be, it's always fun because I love doing it because I poke fun at him wherever I can. All of us know Jonathan Sackett, and it's always easy to make fun of him. <laughs> so um, I, I was just going to say, would we have any good wise words? Because he, he's definitely – he is a master connector at that, but he's certainly been uh, – a fun guy to be dealing with. Any good stories from when Jonathan and uh, Jamal was interviewed on your show? Just I know that because it'll be worth making fun of him at this point. He'll be like, oh, my God, you got to be kidding. You did that during the episode? <laughs> sure. Well, it's amazing to see them actually in a room together to see like the dynamics, you know, because Jamal is so laid back and Jonathan is so Jonathan. <laughs> 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 yeah. And I have one for you <laughs> because he had a, a water bottle. And he was clicking it in the show. I literally, like a mother, slapped his hand and had to grab the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So funny. He felt well, very reprimanded. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> when you have that creative of a mind and you're that outgoing every now and then, your child, inner child just gets out. And I think that's what's going yes. on with it. <laughs> Sean Linda, Arlington Forbes, Dion Nichols, the entire team from Two Black Guys with Good Credit. This has been so much fun. And thank you so much for coming on Thrive Loud. Oh, thank you. Awesome time. And what you're doing is very exceptional as well, Lou. I mean, I love the show Thrive. I got, like you said, there's a lot of people on your show that I now I got to listen to and see what they're doing, and it inspired me as well. So you are definitely thriving, my brother. You are definitely thriving. So well, thank it, you. coming from you, that's an honor. And uh, as you guys now know, you're, that's why you're on the show and why you're in great company along with it. So thanks again for being on. This is fun. And to all listeners, definitely check out this this show. It is it is something that we all should be listening to uh, and definitely a bit a, a bit for everybody. So thanks again, guys, for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to all the Thrive Lab listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. <laughs> <laughs>
So this is where we laugh and we will use this as some form of funny thing All in the right. end there. Well, the slippery one, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm wondering why Arlington's having issues. Do me a favor, uh, Sean, text him and Start just... Again. I also have a backup in case we have real problems here, which will be another way we'll do this. But you guys haven't dropped off at all, which is strange. Mm-hmm. Let me call him. No, I'll just call him. Sean, you there? Sean's there. I hear Sean. He was calling Arlington there. I can hear you guys perfectly well. Okay. All right, Arlington, are you back? I'm back. All right, we'll figure out what's going on, but we'll just I'll just pick it up from here and I'll we'll, the opening was so much fun. It was good. So we'll just I know, it was it. great. Yeah, I know. Right until yeah. I dropped. I was like, "Oh, that's a great open." So, Hello? so yeah, Hello? so here, yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, so here we go. So first of all, Sean Linda, Arlington Forbes, Dion Nichols, welcome to Thrive Loud. Thanks for Thank having you. us. 